they're doing, they'll turn the top separate, they'll turn the bottom separate, and then they'll put them together for the pepper mill. And it's kind of tough to get everything to match up when you do it that way. So kind of changed it up a little bit. And they talk about gluing the insert in on top. It comes with screws, so I'm using the screws rather than gluing it in plastic on wood. I don't know. I'm not happy about that. And I know a couple guys at the uh, wood turning credit class have made them, and they kind of came up with the same way I'm doing it. So I think it's probably the, a good way. But to start out with, it's a two-inch block and a six-inch block or a four-inch block. So you just take your table saw, make sure the blade is. 90 degrees, either use a framing square or your digital gauge so you're nice and square. And cut off a two and a four inch block and then mark the grain pattern. So when you go to drill your holes in here, that you don't wind up this way or down on the other end or something. So put your little X on there. And then I'm going to put it just between centers like this with the two flat sides together. If you're worried about it slipping a little bit, you can just wet one surface. They'll stick a little bit, but you crank them up and they're pretty good. I have a damp rag there, so I'm okay. So you're just going to mark the centers like you would on anything else. Draw your little X, put your dot in the middle. But when you draw your X, keep it small because this is going to be your finished surface. So unless you want to erase your pencil marks and stuff, just put the little X in the center. And if they're not lined up, it really doesn't make any difference. I'm going to turn them round, so it really isn't going to hurt anything one way or the other. This is mahogany. If you look on the table over there in the corner, I've got six or seven little demos that I put together with different shapes and patterns on them and stuff. This will be the dark one that's in that group. So if it turns out what I'm going to do after the demonstration is put the kit in it and then put it on a raffle table. And if you're interested in it, it'll just cost you 8 bucks for the kit for the club. But you can have the turned pepper mill for free. So if you're interested, I'll just set it up there if somebody wants it. So we're going to turn the corners off. And like any time you want to start in the middle and work toward the corners, do light cuts when you get started on it fragile corners like that. You don't want to go in from the end to end. You want to start in the middle and work off both ways. I didn't have the chuck pulled it in with a mallet, so it kind of pulled in a little tighter, and it's moved just a little bit, but it's fine.
Okay, I'm almost round. That's good enough. Now I'm going to put tendons on there so I can put it in a chuck and then drill the holes in the centers. You don't turn a tendon on here. Like the 8-inch, you got your 10 or 11-inch blank and you turn a tendon to fit the inside. They use their plastic insert as your tendon. So you don't have to do that on this one. So it makes it a lot actually easier. You don't, it's not so fussy. You just don't want to sand once you drill your holes because their parts don't fit real snug. You don't want to make it any bigger than you have to. So I'm going to turn a tendon on both ends of each blank so I can turn them around and drill them. So now again, you want to keep track to where the middle is, so put another X on there. So you get your two sides made it up. The green on this isn't too fancy, so it won't be that noticeable. I scattered some sheets on the top counter there. I think there's four or five sheets there. So on the very top, if you looked at the table over there, the top has got the, either the gold or the silver disc, and that's an inch and a half. And what they do is they drill that a quarter inch deep. That leaves room for the cover to snap in a little bit. And again, that depth that really don't make a lot of difference if you go over or a little bit below because it's just that cover and it's fairly shallow. But you want to make sure you're on the top of the pepper mill, not the middle part. So that's a quarter inch deep. 
and just an uh, inch and a half diameter. Bottom gets an inch and a half on both ends. The bottom end is 5 eighths deep because that's where your grinder mechanism is. And you could go just a tad over that. And I didn't throw my little ruler in there, so. You got a little ruler on it on the corner there, Kelly, or not? Otherwise, I'd just guess it'll be close enough. Yeah, that'll work. Should have won glue last night, right? Right on three eighths. I'll give it just a tad more. This end is the middle top of the bottom part. That one they say a quarter inch, and that's where your tendon will be from that plastic insert. And if you use the screws, go a tad over a quarter inch, then they won't drag on there. And the depth doesn't make any difference because that's part of your pepper grinder part. It's just the clearance for the tendon, so go a little over. Now we're going to drill an inch and a sixteenth down through the middle of this like you do on a regular pepper grinder and through the top cover as well. So the drilling is done on that. Now you got the bottom recessed for the grinder part. 
And then the top would be where the tendon goes in for the, for the top part. And again, at 1 16th all the way through the cover. You could go all the way through, but if you don't want any tear, I'll go from both ways. So that's pretty well all the drilling, you're done with that. So it's pretty straightforward, goes pretty good. Almost got gotcha. you. Now on the paper they recommend or they show using like an expandable collet to put in one end of your block and then go up to the cone on the other end. And what I tried is one of these little rubber deals for your sandpaper goes over, little one inch diameter. Put it in, expand it, but I find that that slips a little bit and it gives this a little bit when you're turning. But it works, you know, if you got nothing else, but then you need the small jaws to go with it as well. But like I said, they recommended you do one piece, do the other piece, and then put them together. And what we wound up doing is making a little jig to mount them together. So I made a little block that's inch and a half on the collar, and it's an inch and sixteenth on the other, a little nipple on there. So that way you can put the two pieces together. The, the inch and a half will go in the bottom one, Probably got it nice and tight. And the sixteenth will go in the top. Again, you want to make sure your X is lined up that you got them the right way. And then to drive it, I use a piece of scrap wood, made a little inch and a half diameter, just a, a block that goes in the chuck that'll fit in there snug fit, cramp them up tight, now you can turn both pieces at one time. Just snug them up a little bit. Uh, recess this back a little farther, so when you go over the top, you want to bring that down right to the top edge in the center. If you don't get all the way down, it'll be flat where the cover sits, and you have a little flat shoulder showing. Nothing that'll hurt, but... And then to make that little jig, what I did is I took a block, drilled an inch and a half hole, and then I drilled an uh, inch and an eighth deeper so I could turn the inch and a half and then drill the inch and a sixteenth along with it. Otherwise you can't get past that inch and a half. And then I drilled another hole, inch and a sixteenth to make that, that little tendon to start with. 
So it works. It worked pretty good. The jig came out where it fits snug. But the cone does work good going in the bottom, so that part's that's a good thing. So now you can go ahead and turn whatever shape you want. Like I said, I've got all different ones on the table over there. So now I'm just going to take the roughing tool, make it round down to whatever diameter you want your pepper mill to be. So you can just use the calipers and look and say, okay, i got to go down. When you turn your tendons, just make sure that the diameter is bigger than what your final pre pepper mill is going to be. So you're going to get it turned down, get it smooth, and then go ahead and turn your beads and coves, whatever you want to do on it. I like lining the edge of the tool rest up with the edge of the bed. That way if you're turning a cylinder, you can go across and you've got a pretty good chance of having uniform thickness all the way across. If this is on an angle, you'll probably follow that a little bit. Yeah, about three sixteenths yet.
Okay, that's about the diameter I want. I'm going to probably do a couple beads in top and in, in the middle, so then a little cove in the center. So I'm just going to take a pencil and mark off where the beads are going to be. So that'll be the width of the bead, and then I'll just put a light line in the middle so I can go both ways from center. And when I'm doing the beads, I like the tool rest to be a little bit higher. So I'm going down when I get to the bottom of the bead rather than going into it, and it tends to push away rather than digging in. far in. That's where light would be a little more handy. Now this is the joint between the cover. So I try to put that between two beads. It's a little easier to have it buried and hit a little bit.
I'm going to use half of those two beads for the cove going in now. Start in the middle and then just work your way to the outside. Always cutting downhill. Matter of fact, I'm going to get rid of this bead anyway, make it a little wider. That's a, I think three or three eighths, I think. Or five, uh, maybe 5A spindle gouge, I'm not sure. You could, but the, it's, it's more blunt. That's a 50 degree angle versus 45, and it's hard to get down in the bottom of a bead without getting a catch. I'm going to take that bead off too right away. Make it a little longer in the middle. And then I'll do the top. Just clean it up a little bit right in there yet, I think. That, and this a tad more on the top edge to bring it right to the top.
A little bit there and then sand it, I think, will be good. That was 120, do it a little 180. Soften that corner a little bit. And a little 240. Sanding at about 500, you don't need to go fast and burn it, just enough to cut. Get little scratches once in a while, just go with the grain, knock them out. Okay, that's probably good for now, and I will drill the holes and then put the kit in.
Any questions so far? that shut up And now the kit comes with the instruction sheet like you have laying around on the table. Like I said, I kind of ignored some of that. And it makes it easier to have a little board with a hole in it because the shaft has to go somewhere when you're putting the screws in. This is the top that goes, goes into the top. Your shaft will go through, drive your pepper grinder. Then this is a tendon that fits on the bottom half to keep the head centered. Then this is a tendon that goes in the top. So you got an inch and a sixteenth, an inch and a half. Comes with five screws. You got three short ones and two long ones. The three short ones go into the top grinder. It's got three holes, so it's pretty self-evident. And then two go in the bottom. And we'll see if we keep them without going in the sawdust. So I'll do the bottom first. It comes pretty well assembled. It's got, I don't know if you can see that, it's got a little recess there in a little recess there and then you got your grinder mechanism that's got goes into the square shaft so it pretty well lines up with those little slots just like that and you just drop it in there's nothing nothing fancy you just need those little slots end up and then on the bottom you'll look there's a little recess the the cross piece is off a little bit so you put that space over the center of the grinder and then just press it down and line it up with the with the other holes. It looks like ceramic, yeah, I think it is. So a lot of the other grinders, the pepper or steel and then the salt or ceramic, but this is pepper. And you drill a hole because it's such a small clearance, drill it on an angle toward the outside. If you go straight in, chances are it'll skin down the out on the inside of your mill. So just angle it a little bit toward the outside. And that's a 1 16th bit on that. And again, these are the longer, longer of the five.
Okay, so the bottom should be recessed a little bit that your screws are deeper than the edge of your pepper mill so that it'll sit flat on the table. And then you do the top. Like I said, that's an inch and a sixteenth. And that's not, not quite a snug fit, but it's close. So if you, if you want to pre-sand that inside a little bit, we probably will do a little sanding in there. But uh, just don't hit that bottom hole, make it any bigger. Check your cover. It's pretty good. The shaft has to come just inside your cover. But you don't want it sticking above the cover because then when you put the cap on, it'll hit the plastic insert and then the steel top will be loose. So if you stay with the two inches and round that over just so you meet the top edge but don't shorten it, you should come out pretty good. And I know on one of them I had a little trouble. I don't know if I had the hole a little big or what, but it, I couldn't get the cover centered. So I took it apart, put the cover on, and then snapped it, and now it's automatically centered. So that seemed to work pretty good. So if you don't put the steel on, then you need the hole again because that plastic shaft is a little longer. And again, angle these out a little bit. I think, Jerry, you glue yours in, don't you? Does that seem to hold good? Yeah. What do you use for glue? But just make sure it's down flat all the way around. Seats in all the way so you know that the recess is deep enough for the screws and that collar. It's just sticking up enough for the knob. Then to adjust the grind just like the other ones, you turn the knob a little tighter and looser to get your, your setting. And these come with a little paper on top, so peel that off when you want to sell it or whatever you're going to do with it. Just a little protection. So basically that's it. Any questions on that? Yeah. I use uh, the wipe-on poly, the gloss. I put on six or seven coats. So, And then the other thing is when you do, you got all the kit out when you're polying it. And then... Uh, if you get five or six layers where the cover goes, it gets pretty snug. You wind up having to sand that back a little bit. And even where that insert goes for the inch and a half, that you might have to sand back if you get six layers in there. Even though it's wipe on and thin, it, it builds up a little bit. So just check it before you try it. But see, right now it's, it's a good fit. But you put the poly on and it gets a little thicker. First couple coats, you can wait four or five hours, six hours, because it soaks in pretty good. And then after that, I just do it once a day. 
I got a Four Seasons room, it gets up 80 in there. And then when I put Polly on them, I didn't bring it along, but I just take a dowel on the workbench without the kid in, you just slide the parts on your dowel, then you can wipe them, and you're not touching either end, you know, they're separate. I just carry the dowel up, put it on a rack in the sunroom, and let her dry, take it back in the basement the next day, and let it dry, and then I buff them when I'm done. But I let it dry probably four or five days before I buff it. Make sure all the layers are dried out. No, I just use the, uh, the be-all buffing system. I just use that brown abrasive and then the white uh, diamond to take that off. I don't put any wax or nothing on, just the, just the buff to shine them up a little bit. So, so if no questions, that's it. Uh, I did bring some parts for that bowl I did la last month, that 3D tumbling block. I've got some pieces there and a picture on kind of how you cut that. But uh, what you do is you take your three, need three colored woods, there's three different. I use cherry, maple, and uh, black walnut. And run them through your, your planer so that the boards are exact same thickness. And then do a scrap piece as well, because that's when you practice your cut on a little bit. So you get three boards the same thickness. Set your table saw up at 60 degrees. I got a little digital gauge. So you crank it up, set that at exactly 60, and you'll see the board laying there. It's got one angle cut on and 60. You take a caliper, measure the length of that diagonal cut. Then you move your fence over that far, and then you just rip the strip. And then all four sides in that piece should be identical. So you do that with your three colors, and that's what I use that waste, that fourth board for, to get that space and that angle set right. Because you don't want to be dinking around with cherry and black walnut and then throw away all the strips away. So I'll use pine or, or just a, maybe a foot long piece that I can play with to, to get it set up right on. Then you just rip the strips and then cut them little chunks of whatever thickness you want to make your bowl. Glue them up and I've got the picture laying there and I'll let that lay there. That in the pieces. So otherwise I'm off to Appleton if you've got no more questions. So. Thank you much. And like I said before, I'll put